Uh, yes, I do, for two reasons. Uh, one, I agree, as I said before, with the President, that we need to look forward. But a very practical reason, if we were to engage in this sort of almost witch hunt, uh, I don't know how much more information we'd get, first of all. Second, I can assure you it would take all of the oxygen out of Washington and distract all of the attention from the many necessary things that Mr. Obama must do. But if the, the system is rotten at its core in some way, I mean, what, so the information that we're getting, and a lot of information does back up what you and Colonel Powell have said in the past, that, that you at the State Department were left out of a lot of these legal memos that were coming out that you didn't know about. Um, that, well, that, that you were certainly fighting for the Geneva Conventions at all times, um, and that there was a, a small group of people, the, you know, the, the Cheney, the David Addington, the John Yoo, and so on, who had a view of presidential power that many who believe in the Constitution of the United States would think is very, very dangerous. Doesn't that have to be sorted out pretty quickly so it doesn't happen again? Having been on the right side of this argument, uh, uh, should you win this argument now? We, uh, it's hard for a bureaucrat, and I was a bureaucrat, Department of State, uh, to say that we were happy we were left out of meetings. But the reason we were left out of the meetings is, as you suggest, we strongly resisted uh, calls to be more uh, outside of Geneva uh, Accords, etc. Uh, and certainly torture uh, would not be something that Secretary Powell or any of his colleagues would, would uh, endorse in any way. I don't agree with your statement about rotten at the core. Uh, in fact, if you look, you'll see that there are various people whether it was in the Department of State, and I'm not, I'm not a saint, I can assure you, or people like the General Counsel of the Navy who, uh, who uh, actually resigned, uh, and various people up and down the line who did the right thing and said the right thing. So to say it was rotten at the core Well, to prove that it isn't, fair. because that is, that is a perception. No, no, well, wait a minute. There's, I want to make a point, though. You correctly identified that the uh, administration took enormous power under themselves, into the executive branch. But one of the reasons they did that was because two other parts of our necessary parts of our bureaucracy were absent without leave, the U.S. Congress and the media. And following 9-11, they took a powder. They left town. And any administration, whether it had been Bill Clinton, John F. Kennedy, or any of them, they would have done exactly what Mr. Bush did, which was to gather to themselves as much executive branch power as possible. In conclusion, though, the president then is above the law. David Addington... Dick Cheney, John Yoo, have, have, have set the precedent now that the, that, the, that, the, that the small groups of people within the government can try and manufacture uh, ways to, um, uh, to sideswipe the Constitution, to not uphold the law, and get away with it. That does mean the president is above the law. The, president, the precedent is now set if there are no prosecutions and there is no accountability. Sure. No, well, uh I think that this was not a, to have a small group of people in any of the U.S. government, successive governments, that try to move things their direction is not unprecedented. Uh, you're trying to get me to say that there ought to be prosecutions, and I don't agree with you. Uh, you can beat the dead horse as long as you want, and I'm glad to sit here, uh, but I'm not going to agree with you. I just, and I'm not convinced that what these fellows did was against the law. I think it was against good judgment. I think it was against our interest. But I'm not uh, sufficiently uh, attuned to all the inner workings and hidden mechanisms of the law to say they broke the law. But, but if there is a decision they've made by those who are in tune with the inner if workings of the law and they say, look, these people have no, broken look, the law, would you accept a prosecution? Then? But listen, I accept whatever the law, that if someone reads the law that way, then I would accept whatever the law says. I mean, there are people I in the DOJ, the Department of Justice right now, who are thinking, hang well, on. Well, uh, I think the president has said, we'll see what Mr. Holder has to say, and he can take a look at it. And that's where we are. And if Mr. Holder says that in his judgment, it looks like it broke the law, then so be it. And we'll all testify, and then I'm happy to, to do my part in that. But I, as a citizen, don't think this is particularly beneficial to my country. I frankly don't think it's beneficial to the international system. It's going to depend to some extent on the United States taking care of more traditional business in a more traditional way. And I think it would uh, distract us from that.